So here we are at Placerville. We're just going to do a quick run up. Traffic, 142 on a 3 mile 45 for left traffic, 3 Placerville. Run the off. Up to 20, up to 1700. Mag check. Rock. Twice because it's cold. We have fuel. Oil pressure is good. Oil temperature is coming up. Comanche 260, it's got a center stack radios. The old Comanches had their radios all down here. Electric flaps. Nice. Placerville traffic. Comanche 8874 Papa, departing runway 5, local flight, Placerville. a bit of a blow dry. 90 gallons of fuel. Still the clouds evaporating out of the trees. We had a lot of rain yesterday. Placerville Comanche 74 Papas on left hand correction. Right hand wind for runway 5 at Placerville. There's Placerville on a right downwind for five. Nice day. So I like Moonies. People know I like Moonies. This plane, Comanches in general, are big Moonies. If you like Moonies, but you don't fit in one, or you like bigger, or a bit more room, a bit more useful load, get a Comanche 260. Excellent plane. 160 knots. 11 gallons an hour. They fly just like a cross between an F-33 Bonanza and a Mooney M M20J. Placerville, Comanche 74 Papas on a one mile final for five at Placerville. People say they float. They don't really float. They float if you're going too fast. So right now I'm doing 65. Gear is down. So let's see. Hold her off. And mains are down. Not much floating. So some people have asked why some of the planes look like they're parked on a road when I do the videos. Well, they kind of are, but they're not like a road. It's the road up to the hangars at Placerville that have never been built. So we're on it now. It's the sort of taxiway, if you like, because there's no planes available on it. So I just put it down because it's a, it's a not crowded, not cluttered backdrop. So it's not like they're on a road. Separate a road. Got to keep in the middle of it. <laughs> and there's Don, the photographer. Da -da. Hi, this is Mark from Skywagon University. We're doing a, a video on something that's slightly out of my wheelhouse, a Comanche. Um, if anybody out there knows more about Comanches, feel free to comment and correct me on anything I'm getting wrong. But the staple Comanche is the 250, the carbureted 250, um, the sort of 59, 60 model. This is actually a 66 Comanche 260. And these were really good planes because they have the center stack panel, which everybody wants. They have 90 gallons of gas, which is great, up from 60. 
Um, they just have got like a few of the little idiosyncrasies of the early planes worked out of them. The 260s were built from 65 to 68. This is a 66. And they are six inches long. The, the two, this is a 260B. There was a 260 in the beginning, just a straight 260. The B is six inches longer than it, and it's all spinner. I mean, it's literally six inches more spinner. The early planes had a little bullet-shaped spinner with a blade near the cowling. So really, the airframe on a straight 260 and a, C and a B like this is only spinner. So it's the same thing. So this has a 540 cubic inch Lycoming in it, which we'll have a look at. So, if you, those two cylinders there, that's an IO360, IO540, and then in the Comanche 400, which they made 148 of them in the uh, 68 to 72, another cylinder here, and it's an IO720, 400 horsepower, 22 gallons an hour in cruise. Kind of an exceptional plane, but this is much more practical. This burns about... Um, 11 to 13 gallons an hour. It does about 160 to 170 knots, which is just under 200 miles an hour. And it also has a 1,200 pound useful load. Obviously 90 gallons of gas, that's 600 pounds, so 600 pounds of people, and six seats. So a, an, an identifying feature of a Comanche 260 is three windows. The 250s had the side windows, and then the second window kind of shaped down a little bit at the back, rounded off, and there wasn't a third window. So a 260 is three windows and six seats. The wing on them is a P50, P51 Mustang wing. It's just a miniature version of the P51 Mustang wing. It's got the taper at the front here, and the back is straight. And they have a complete flying stabilator on the back. Let me go around there and show you that. Landing lights and the wing tips. They have the whole thing moves. Like on a lot of Cherokees, all the papers, arrows, for Cherokee on 40s, archers, they all do this. But the whole tail moves and there's a trim tab at the back of it. So inside here, there's obviously a spar going through it, this thick. And then it goes right throughout the other side. And then from that spar, sticking up into the fuselage to about here, there's a counterweight that gives it stability. That's why it's called a stabilator. But look at this. I've got one from a plane we worked on earlier. They have an AD. Comanches have some ADs. We'll talk about them. This is the thing that gets inspected every 500 hours in a Comanche. It goes inside the fuselage. We'll get a little bit of a closer up view of it. So the spar line goes straight through here in the fuselage and the counterweight sticks out here to about here with a lead weight on the end. So when you move the elevator, this does this. This can crack. So you remove it and you inspect around the bolts and around here for cracks every 500 hours. And that involves the total removal of the entire tail. So it's a big deal. So the way to get over that is you remove this one like we did on a previous plane, but it was perfect after 60 years. And inside here, there's a more beefy version of it, which is like big flat sides and much more chunky. They don't crack and it's called the Australian Stabilator Horn Replacement AD, get rid of, kit, something like that. But if you're buying a Comanche, see if it's got the Australian version of that in it. And then the other thing that everybody always wants on a Comanche, by the way, 260s, baggage door on the left side, vertically opening. The earlier ones, the baggage doors on the right hand side, hinged on the side. That's actually quite a nice feature. The things people really want on Comanches is 90 gallons. So the 250 carbureted planes were 60, and people add the extra tank, but the 260s all were 90. So you've got main, auxiliary, main, auxiliary. And I'll show you in the cockpit later how the fuel system works. It's actually very good. Right at the beginning of Comanche production in 1957, the first one built was a Comanche 180 horse. They had 180 horsepower like combing, like a Mooney M20C, a little bit underpowered for this bigger airframe. They burn 10 gallons an hour. They do 135 knots. They're not that much of a load hauler, but they're kind of an efficient, nice little plane, and there's not many of them. They made them from 57 to 64. Those were the Comanche 180s. Something else that people like on Comanches is all three wheels the same size. Early Comanches had a smaller nose wheel, and they tended to 
sort of barrel on the runway, like a wheelbarrow with the nose down. And there's an STC to put the large nose wheel on them. So all three tires are 600 sixes, um, which makes it handy for keeping spares too. So that's something that people look for. 90 gallons, center stack radios, one piece windshield, large nose wheel, tail horn AD, gear AD. The gear AD is, an ins is a very significant um, buyer criteria on a Comanche. So when you're buying one of these, you always ask, how many hours until the thousand hour gear AD is due again? Because that one cannot be replaced like the Australian gear horn. Um, this plane's got about uh, 500 left, which is six, seven years of flying. It's quite a lot. And you'll know when they need it, because if you taxi a Comanche, you can actually be going sideways, but be going straight. The front of the cowling can be pointing sideways, but the plane's going straight because everything moves. Comanche fuel tanks and fuel system will go inside in a minute. If it only has this, it's 60 gallons. If it has both, it's 90. And I like these caps too. They have this lid, which is great, and they have a recessed well, which means water would run out without going into the fuel. You undo this, and then you lift it out. This rubber gets compressed by this bolt and it fattens it and seals against the side. I mean, it's, it's in good condition. These are absolutely excellent gas caps. It just fits in the hole, you make it fat again, and when it gets too stiff to turn, that is sealed. And then you close it, and that is aerodynamic. No lid on it, no nothing on it. These planes stopped production in 1972 when the factory in Lock Haven, Pennsylvania flooded and all the tooling was destroyed and skins and sheet metal and everything was destroyed. They stopped making them. If this plane had been allowed to evolve in Piper's line, if that flood hadn't happened, these are very competitive with an F-33 Bonanza. I once had a, an F-33 that had to go from A to B and a Comanche that was at B that had to come back to A on a calm day and I flew one one way, one the other way. The F-33 was worth twice what the Comanche was worth and the Comanche was a bit faster. I mean, obviously it's not a Bonanza, but if you want to go fast for not a lot of money, it's hard to beat these. Okay, we'll go inside and have a look at the fuel selector. Inside the plane, in its, with its fuel system, there's one fuel gauge, but there's four tanks. So what they did, which is very efficient, is down here between the seats, there's the fuel selector, and it's got left main, right main, right auxiliary, left auxiliary. <clears throat> so you literally just point it at the tank you want to burn, which is great, but one fuel gauge. So if you press these buttons, that will tell you on the gauge what is in that tank. So you can point it at the one it's in, which it'll be showing anyway because it's on it. But if you want to know what's in your auxiliary, you want to know what's in your right main, you want to know what's in your left main, the gauge will show whatever it's at. So it's literally just select what you need. A very good system. It has uh, 18... Oh, hang on. The auxiliaries have 15 each, and the mains have 28 each, so there's a total of 90 gallons. And since we're in the cockpit, this handle right here is the gear handle. If you pull that up and pumped it, that needs a little bit of... If you pull that up and pump it, that will pump down the gear manually. When you transition the gear in flight, when you're actually putting it up and down, that will move, and it's a very good indicator the gear's moving, because it moves with it. If you had a gear problem, the gear extension handle is here. Remove this cover with the instructions handily on the lid. A lot of early Comanches have no foot brakes. There's no toe brakes here, like this has them. The 260s have them. A lot don't have them, and they instead they have this center pull handle. So when you're taxiing it, even on some Cherokee 180s, 140s from the 60s is the same. So when you're taxiing in one with no brakes, you literally just brake here. And then you steer it, and then brake, steer it, brake. That still works. It's very effective. But it's very familiar and more like every other plane to have tow brakes on them, which is nice. But there's none on the right side. So that is what it would look like in an older Comanche that doesn't have tow brakes on either side. So the trim on Comanches is always on the headliner. It looks like a VW windshield um, window winder. And the way to remember which is direction, here's your indicator, but you'd never really look up. You do it by feel. If you're going in this side of the arc, so think of pilot side of the arc, that is nose up because you're going away from the nose. 
and that is nose down, because you're going forward. I always think of it as nose down, nose up, and you'll always get it right. It's very effective. I mean, in a total flight, takeoff, landing, cruise, everything, you'd probably only ever do it that much. But, you know, that's the trim up there. It's kind of cool having it up on the ceiling. So that's uh, a brief history of Comanches in general, and specifically this 260, the 260 horse fuel-injected 540 powered one, the later planes. Um, if you like these videos, subscribe on the link below, click on the little bell, that will give you notifications. And um, if you see any errors in this, because I'm not a Comanche expert, just feel free to uh, comment down below and I'll be glad to listen. And then uh, remember, they only made 1,026 of these. So if you want one, get it now. They're getting older. Thanks. Thanks.